A couple of weeks ago, I made a video about the Flat Earth Theory, a proposed model which supposedly explains the Earth's geometry as a plane or a disk, and started several long chains of discussions in the comment section, which was of course to be anticipated. The video itself was centered around the ways in which we support our scientific arguments, and that we should evaluate views from different perspectives. However, from the comment section, it was clear that many of the viewers, especially supporters of the Flat Earth Theory, had misunderstood the message of the video. This misinterpretation led to many of the Flat Earthers trying to discuss evidence which disproves a spherical Earth, and in many cases, proves a Flat Earth, which to many of us, may sound absurd. But before ending our arguments there, we must ask ourselves how, and more importantly, why do they think this? Therefore, this video will be about two distinct things. Firstly, I will sort of debunk one of the most interesting points raised in the comment section of the video about gas pressure, and secondly, I will share some evidence which I believe fully supports a spherical Earth. However, before we start, from YouTube statistics, only a tiny fraction of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed, and so, if you enjoy this video, please subscribe. It is free and you will always be notified when new exciting videos are uploaded on this channel. So, with that said, let's put our thinking caps on. Arguably, one of the most interesting comments on that video was related to the concept of gas pressure, and it didn't prove that the Earth is flat, but its goal is to disprove the Earth being a globe. Essentially, the flat earthers argued that the globe is impossible because there would have to be a container for gas pressure namely the atmosphere. However, as there is nothing outside the atmosphere, just vacuum, the globe therefore cannot exist. Now, how do we respond to this exact claim? Firstly, we must consider why they think this. There are certainly many examples we can see where an airtight container can be pressurized, like tires and balloons, and it can be tempting to see the Earth's atmosphere as a pressurized environment as evidence of a container. However, there are a couple of problems with this model which the flat earthers need to overcome. One is Pascal's principle, which says that the air pressure within a container will be the same everywhere. This makes sense if you think about the air molecules inside, for example, a bicycle tire. If there was higher air pressure on one side, then the air molecules would be pushed over to the low pressure side until everything else is evened out. But when we look closer at the Earth's atmosphere, we can easily show that the air pressure is not the same everywhere. All we need to do is look at a local barometer and see that it does indeed change over time, and we can see from weather maps that it is different in different places. Worse still, we can take our own barometer up a hill, or tall building, and see that the higher up we go, the lower the air pressure becomes. We can also see that there is no barrier that is stopping the high pressure air at the bottom from moving up to even out the low air pressure up above. So the question is, is there a outer barrier high above the earth that contains air? Well, there's actually no need for this based on the barometer tests, which imply that eventually the air pressure will drop to basically zero if one goes high enough. If this isn't convincing and flat earthers still believe in two different pressure systems, people have literally shown experimentally that gas pressure is in fact still possible without a container. Credits to Carl Wilson, who has found a video of someone demonstrating this. But even if the flat earthers were right about this claim disproving a globe earth, it would mean that a dome or a barrier above the atmosphere is necessary for the flat earth model. However, there is absolutely no evidence that there is any kind of dome or container above the earth. There are videos of rockets exploding, but no indications that there was a collision. Now, going back to the perspective of a flat earther, if we assume for now that the container can be shown, it's unclear how this would suggest a specific geometric shape to the earth. In other words, even if there was a container accommodating the atmosphere, why would this disprove a spherical globe in any way? One common idea seems to be that the container is a dome, which is supported at the perimeter of a disc-shaped Earth. But is that the only possibility? Why couldn't a spherical Earth be contained within a larger spherical dome, assuming that a hypothetical dome can be located? The question seems to assume the snow globe model, but there is no reason to think that a dome, if there is one, 
couldn't be other shapes and that the Earth must have a flat surface. If this is not enough to persuade the flat earthers, then take the example of the gas giant Jupiter. It's literally a spinning ball of gas orbiting the sun in a near perfect vacuum. So why would Earth be different? What's so special about it that it can't behave the same as the other celestial objects in our solar system? To conclude so far, there is no compelling evidence for any kind of dome. In fact, the evidence, so far, suggests that it either isn't pressurized or isn't there at all. Hence, this claim related to gas pressure does not prove or disprove anything. It's just completely incorrect in the first place. Now, moving on, what evidence is available to us that indeed proves the Earth is a globe? Consider Star Trail's photography, a long exposure image of the night sky. About three years ago, I captured this long exposure image in northern Europe. Now, if I were to do the same but say on the equator, the star trails will look completely different, and this has been done by many people all around the world. This cannot be explained by a flat earth, because then no matter where you would be on the earth, the star trails will look nearly if not completely identical, with the north star Polaris always almost at the observer's zenith. So, do star trails prove the earth is a globe? Well, by comparing the appearance of star trails and the position of the North Star Polaris, we are able to see that these variations are only possible if the Earth is a globe. Any other geometry would cause anomalies and would not support the variations. So yes, star trails completely support a spherical Earth. Most of us acknowledge that the Earth is a globe, but I am sure that from the arguments of flat earthers, we also have learned an enormous amount about the way the universe and the world works. From this, we should prompt ourselves that talking to flat earthers reminds us to think critically and argue with robust parts. After all, it is because of them that we do not all become blind scientists. <laughs>